Yeah. Now I admit, most churches ain't fit to go to. If you're gonna get there and hear a man whine and, and entertain you and you don't learn nothing or you hear nothing, then I wouldn't go either. Stay at home. I'm the one preacher that posts that up. I say, go and get back in the bed if you're going to see a liar this morning. <laughs> But if you got that's a preacher that's going to open the Bible and say, Thus saith the Lord, Better show up. then you need to be here. And let me tell you, it ain't even just about the preacher. One day I'm going to do a teaching on attendance, because here's the thing. It's not, it's selfish to stay at home, because it ain't just about what you can get. It's about what you're supposed to offer. Amen. 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 It's something about fellowship. Amen. Hey, I, y'all ain't going to want to miss this. I just thought I'd leave y'all with this song today. When I read this, this question, it was this, this, this challenge, YouTube, I want y'all to listen to. Make sure that, DJ, you ready to go? Turn, uh, go, DJ. Wonder what kind of a huh? Oh, I thought he was finished. <laughs> Every yes, excuse Lord. you can think of was in that in song. That song. Yes, so even the little old lady said, I ain't coming back because the preacher ain't shaking my hand. <laughs> Somebody ought to say, ouch. Ouch. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. That preached by itself, didn't it? No way out. The enemy knows what you need is in the house. Amen. So he keeps you with an excuse. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm just, I, listen, I'm willing to go to any, any, I will go as high as I need to go, as low as I need to go to make sure yes, you Lord. get this truth. Amen? Amen. All right, so brother, you wrote me and you challenged me well, yeah. and you lose. I want you in here. Yes, sir. Huh? Uh-huh. See, in the streets, they call that kind of betting. When you make a bet and can't pay, there's a word they call that. We won't say it. Amen? Come on now. Uh, pay up. What do you have to pay? Your body. That's right. Put it in a chair. Amen? Amen. All right, Deacon, give me the, is this the last question? Amen. Give me the last question. Everybody say, thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We might break the record. Come on. <laughs> Pastor Rob. Yes. I'm doing my part the best I can. I've prayed more in these past three months than I have in my entire life for direction from God, but it's like he ain't talking to me. I've been asking him what to do, but I still don't know. Sometimes I feel bad to keep asking God over and over. I want to get through this. I feel like I'm living on edge. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. All right. Anybody ever felt like this? Thank y'all for being honest. Amen. Right. Have you? Oh, oh, no, no. Y'all didn't get Y'all, see, we got folks fronting in here. Uh, how many of you have ever felt like you're talking to God over and over, but you have not gotten an answer? And church folk like to say stuff like, let the Lord lead you. You ever heard people say that? Oh, yeah. And you never quite figured out how you can let somebody lead you that you don't see. 
Come on, nobody want to talk real. Church, they don't tell you that in the church. I mean, I ain't seen God now one time in my life, and you keep telling him, let him lead me. Come on now. So the, uh, the kind of ministry we have here is we want to talk real. We want people to understand and not just quote good old Bible uh, 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 mannerisms and good old Bible uh, uh, quotes and things of that nature and not even understand how they apply. I want you to read it again, if you yeah. don't mind. Pastor Rob, mm -hmm. I'm doing my part the best I can. That's it. I pray more in these past three months than I have in my entire life. When you're going through, look, how many of y'all know this is true? You ain't never prayed like you could pray amen. until you get into a real situation. Amen. I know that's true. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. I mean, yeah, I mean, folk don't pray, folk don't talk to God, but if you ever get in a real jam, you think about the time you prayed more than ever, and I guarantee you, it won't when things were going good. I guarantee you it was when trouble was at your door. Amen. Oh, they got mad at me today because I posted on Facebook, I, it's tr uh, things gotten bad enough to make you come back to church. Come on now. And they posted on Facebook. I don't leave church. I, 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 I said, Yeah, you ain't got. It ain't got bad ain't enough. Got bad enough. Uh, Pastor, you making us feel bad. That's all right. I pump y'all up every week. That's now right. let me say something to you that's going to be. Listen, that's it's right. got to get bad enough before we talk to God. That's right. Oh, I, 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 we quote scripture. We quote. I mean, the most popular scripture in the world. We all quote it and know it, and none of us really understand it. In the book of Psalm 23, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. Huh, what is a shepherd? What is the job of a shepherd? You say the Lord is my shepherd. If you don't know who the shepherd is and what he does and what his responsibilities and accountabilities are, my God, why are you saying it today? Oh, I want to, uh, you said you tried everything and said you've been praying for how long? Three months. Oh, three months. Oh, that ain't nothing. Amen. Oh, some of us have been praying for three years. And feel like you still have not heard the voice of God. Amen. Anybody been praying for a long time? Come on, just lift your hand. Just a long time. Amen. Uh, so our question is, Pastor, you prayed over and over and said you even felt. Amen. Uh, even felt like he ain't talking to me. Felt like he ain't talking. Now let me just stop and just deal with this and we're going to let you go. All right, so number one, I just want to deal with this. First of all, don't feel weird that you were praying the same prayer more than once. Amen. All right, everybody say Jesus. Jesus. And because of time, I won't go there. But how many of y'all know when Jesus was getting ready to go to be put to death, the Bible declares that Jesus prayed. And when he prayed, he prayed these words, let this cup pass. Y'all remember that? Amen. How many of y'all remember him saying, let this cup pass? Now, do y'all know what let this cup pass mean? Allow me to translate. Let this cup pass simply means what I'm getting ready to have to deal with God, don't let me deal with it. How many of y'all, when you pray, you say, Lord, take this problem away from me? All right, I'm talking to you now. So I want you to know that if Jesus, who walked on water, raised the dead, healed the sick, opened up blind eyes, cast out devils, had a point in his life where he said, Lord, please give me another route. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me today. He said, let this what? Okay, let me explain. You see, Lord, I, I, I'll take a piece of glass or give me another pot or give me something, but I ain't trying to drink out of that old hard cup. That cup that you have for me is that I've got to go through death. And a lot of us want to live and be resurrected and have all power, but we don't want to die. Uh, I wonder, do you know you're going through something, but it's not by coincidence. Y'all with me? Uh, but the Bible then tells me, because we're running out of time, Jesus prayed, and then he got up, and the Bible says he went into another place, and he told the disciples, I want y'all to pray with me. And you know what they did? The Bible said they fell asleep. And Jesus got upset. You know, you get frustrated when you got something going on, and people ain't serious about it like you're about it. You ever had a real problem, and you just wish people would come and get serious about it because you're serious, and they're over there, what? Sleep? Uh, Jesus woke up and said, man, can't y'all stay awake? Can you not just stay awake for one? One hour. Uh, the Bible said, but he went back and prayed again. When he prayed again, guess what he said to the Lord? Let this cup pass. Okay, y'all didn't catch that. Uh, uh, Jesus was going through something so grueling, so uh, so grievous, so hard, so rough, so trials. Listen, so full of fiery trials and the things that were beginning to affect his mindset and his emotions. Jesus went through a point where he was attacked by depression. I need to talk to somebody in here that's been dealing with depression. I'm talking about spots where you're in and out, spots where it hurts to even be awake when it's daytime and you prefer the night because at least at night you you can go to sleep and when you go to sleep oh y'all I'm talking to somebody when you go to sleep now you just can be numb and don't have to feel it oh anybody ever been through depression like that I'm talking about depression like they said on Facebook that the only reason you don't you still living is for your children y'all ever been that's depression 
Okay, y'all ain't talking. I, I, you ever been that depressed where the only reason you keep going is because you got two little ones that are looking for you? Oh, that's depression. And the church don't know what to do about it because they'll sing you a song and they'll quote you a scripture. But Lord, I need you to show me for real. I don't need no religious phrases. I don't need no religious poems. Somebody pull me out of this hole. Uh, but I look at the scripture and the Bible tells me, he says, Jesus went down and woke up, said he prayed that they fell asleep and he woke them back up and he prayed the same prayer three times. Come on, somebody. God, there has to be another way for me to save the world. Uh, maybe I can save the world and we can skip over the rough places where I'm spit upon and where I'm cursed and where I'm beaten. Oh, come on, somebody. And I don't know, can I just take a praise break and say, y'all, he did it for us. Amen. Can y'all just thank the Lord today? He did it for you. But he said, Lord, let me get it another way. I wonder what you're going through in here today that you're saying to God, it's got to be another plan. Mm. Uh, and so, Lord, will you please speak to me? Because the writer wrote me and the writer said, whoever that was that wrote me said, I I'm tired of talking. And it seemed like he ain't talking. Is that what they said? Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. I Amen. I'm getting ready to help somebody. Anybody need help? Or I'm getting ready to help you. Maybe the reason why you ain't getting no answer, okay, when you're praying over and over again, okay, it's because some of us are so busy wondering why he's not answering, okay? Uh, 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 you're writing me because you're wondering, how does God talk? Church folks, he's saying, the Lord told me, the Lord spoke. And I don't know about you, I'm a pastor for 12 years. Cast out devils, watch people's lives change. I've never heard God voice say, Rob, get up and go to the left. I've never heard it. Have you heard it like that? Maybe you have, but I haven't, amen? So how do I know when God is talking? Because where I am surely don't look like where he told me he was taking me. Amen. Oh, come on. Can I talk to somebody? He promised me great things, but I don't see even a glimpse of good things because I'm in a dark place. Amen. Psalm 23 said, yea, though I walk through the valley. Come on, somebody. Can I just stay there for a minute? The valley. You, you've been hearing this your whole life. But what is a valley? The valley is the low place. Uh, I'm walking through the valley of the shadow. And where there's a shadow, it just simply means that the shadow is that it's dark. But let me tell you, he didn't say it's night. He just said it's a shadow because what he wants you to know is why you feel like that the whole world has collapsed and that the whole world is over it's really light outside but it's just a shadow over you Amen. and the shadow is you have forgotten who's in control all right come on anybody walking through a low place are you at a low place in your life well here I'm, I'm gonna get to a good part just hanging there so as he walked through the valley of the shadow of death what do you mean he uh, he talks about how I'm going through a path and let me just share this with somebody if if you're in a valley, if you're in a low place, I want you to know that God will still direct your path. Amen. And, can, did y'all catch that? Amen. And just to, listen, just because I'm in a valley don't mean God is not with me. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the shepherd will walk you through the valley, which is your path. I don't know what you've been through, but no matter how bad it is, I want you to know God didn't abandon you. He's right there in the middle of that path. Okay, I ain't getting no help. So some of us are wondering why he didn't answer me and why I pray over and over the same prayer. And you said, God ain't saying nothing. And can I share this with you? When he ain't saying nothing, it's because he already said something. Amen. Y'all didn't catch that. When he ain't saying nothing, it's when he already said something. Hold on. So maybe while we're praying over and over, we're not looking for an answer. Maybe we keep praying because we're looking for a different answer. I knew it would get tight. A lot of us keep praying and asking the Lord what we ought to do. And we feel like he's not answering. But I'm mighty afraid it ain't an answer. Is that we want another answer. Some of us got to make some decisions and do some things that we didn't want to do. And we want God to change his mind. Wow. Oh, but I got news for two people. And we're getting ready to go. But watch this. I got news for two people today that really what you're going through, God has already led you to where you are. Yes, right. And where you are, you have to drink of that cup. Amen. Okay, that ain't the part I wanted to hear, Pastor. Okay, so in other words, 
you got to listen. Come on, look at somebody and say, listen. Listen. Because here's the thing. When you look in Psalms 23, he says something. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, oh, yeah. come on. I will fear no evil. I will fear. Everybody say, no fear. No fear. We're going to get back to that. Come on, we'll just say, no fear. No fear. Uh, because the Lord For thou art with me. is with me. Come on, somebody. Amen. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We'll get back to that. Come on. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Well, oh, 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 come on. Thou anointest my head with oil. Come on. My cup runneth over. Mm -hmm. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yeah. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, now hold on, hold on. So, I want God to give me a new answer, but here's the thing. When God don't give me a new answer, you want to know what's going on? The old answer still stands. Amen. But Lord, how do I hear you speak? How do I hear you talk? Come on, somebody. How do I know when God is sharing something, when he's giving me something, when he's giving me the gift to hear him? And this is what I want to share with somebody. If you're in a valley, you're in a place of darkness. Everybody said darkness. Darkness. And when you're in a dark place, you can't see. And most of our problem with why we are depressed, why we are scared, why we are full of anxiety is not because we don't have hope. It's because we don't see hope. Okay, y'all didn't hear that. Okay, y'all didn't catch it. Anybody ever been afraid? You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how you're going to pay the bills. You don't know how family going to make it in sickness. You don't know. If you're going through whatever you're going through, oh, that's fear trying to attack you. Why? Not because of what's out there to get you, but because of you not being able to see. Amen. Okay, y'all didn't get it, so let me talk to you again. Uh, growing up, the babies in the uh, the little babies in the room, and it's dark, and all of a sudden, like the other night, a great thunderstorm come. Okay, I'm almost done, and when the thunderstorm come, oh, you ever hear real? I mean, I'm talking about when that thunder rock in the house, and the lightning is flashing, and the baby girl, anybody got a little girl, a little boy, and they're scared to death. You remember growing up scared to death of a thunderstorm, and, and the Bible says, uh, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, it's so funny because a lot of us go into a dark place in our life and the first thing we do is we turn oh my god we turn to facebook come on somebody Amen. you can get me isaiah 34 not only do we turn to facebook we turn to other people and i mean come on i ain't talking against nobody and i'm not putting nobody because all of us have vented and we oh we put on there i'm just looking i need somebody to talk to and not realizing that the people that we're reaching out to they're in darkness themselves Amen. oh y'all quiet in here uh i, I don't know but they say I don't need sympathy from nobody. I need help. Amen. Is there anybody that can pull me out of this jam? And sometimes when I look at the people I serve, and I serve you, amen, you are the people God gave me, and I love you as a pastor, but I see you all on Facebook, and I see you all on Instagram, and I see you all text messaging each other and crying to people who don't even know God about how to help you who knows God. On, oh, it does something to my heart. I understand because you're hurting. I understand because you're depressed. You're scared, but like the little girl, the little boy that's in his room, while he's in this room and the thunder's rolling, I want to tell you how he got free. Come on, when you were young, let me tell you how you get free. You got two options. Either the baby can lay in the bed and just shake while the thunder continues to roll and wet all on him or herself. Uh, but if you were like me, or come on, little children, uh, the little baby will get up. Oh, come on, y'all getting ready to miss this. The little baby will get up while the thunder is rumbling. See, you're scared and you really don't even need to be. The baby will get up and all of a sudden, the Bible said, though he walked through the valley of the shadow, but guess what you're doing? Now the little baby is walking through the valley of the hallway, coming out the valley of his bedroom, coming past the bathroom. There's a you know, there's always a light on in the bathroom and, and it's a long walk when you're scared of the thunder and the storm. I don't know who's getting what I'm saying, but he what you're trying to do. You're trying to get to daddy's room. If I can get to mama or daddy's room, it don't matter that it's storming. I'll get in the bed and when I'm in the bed with, oh y'all ain't hearing me, all of a sudden I'm in his presence and every, all the fears got to go. Oh look at somebody and tell them fear got to go. Depression got to go. And here's the thing about daddy. Can I share this with you? When you get in the bed with mom and daddy, mom and daddy don't stop the thunder. Come on somebody. Mom and daddy don't stop the rain. Ah, but let me tell you, it makes it all right because the only thing they needed to give you was their presence. Okay, y'all didn't catch that, but let me shout real quick. I found out that God don't stop the thunder. He won't stop what you're going through. He won't stop the feelings that you're having all the time because feelings are, feelings are necessary. Everybody said necessary. 
Now, feelings are just like the alarm clock, or feelings are like the check engine light. In my car right now in the back seat, this is the only way I can think of it, is I got a little piece I took when I used to go to the auction. I'm buying cars. When I go to the auction, I take the check engine uh, 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 <coughs> light, uh, uh, the computer. And what the computer does is when I'm driving or looking to buy a car, if there's a check engine light, I know something is wrong. Uh, but every now and then you get car dealers that get slick. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. And they get this little computer I bought from AutoZone for a hundred and something dollars. And they hook up the diagnostic. And when they hook up the diagnostic, the diagnostic tells me what's wrong, but it allows me to bypass the light that's telling me what's going on. Now, if I want to sell the car and don't want nobody to know what's going on, oh, y'all ain't catching this, then I'll just press erase. Uh, and a lot of us got hell going on. We're depressed. We're messed up. We're sad. We're all beat up in our lives. And we're so busy trying to sell to other people that everything is all right. And the truth of the matter is we walking around with a computer diagnostic trying to shut off the check engine light. But I wish somebody would hear me today. Don't cut off the check engine light. The check engine light is your emotions. And when you feel pain, pain means, yes, you are alive. Oh, y'all quiet today. If you didn't have pain, you bleed out. If you didn't have pain, you'd be dead. Amen. You ought to just say, Lord, I don't like the way it feels, but thank God I am alive. Yes, After all I've been through, I still have some emotion. After all I've been through, I'm not a dummy or a plastic doll. I still got feelings and I can cry and I can smile. Yes, oh, I'm preaching in here today. I need y'all to get on board. Uh, a lot of us keep trying to shut off the check engine light. Uh, but the check engine light let me know something ain't running right. Uh, but what, what, what should I fear? What should I, uh, what am I running to? What am I trying to do? Amen. Uh, God's got an answer, but Lord have mercy, fear is overtaking me. Uh, come on, Isaiah 34. Come on, Deacon. Amen. We're getting ready to go because I want to share with you that here's the deal. How do I know when God is talking? Uh, they told me he speak with a still, a small, still voice. Huh? Come on, can I talk to you? Anybody got navigation in your car? If you don't have it in your car, praise the Lord. That's all right. You got it on your phone. And I don't know, but I, if you're like me, sometimes I disagree with the woman on the navigation. Oh, uh, come on. She, and, and, see, and this is what I want to tell you, Pastor. How do I listen for God? And how do I get direction? Because the church don't never tell me how God can lead me by his hand when I never even seen his face. Can I share with you how you do that? First of all, God is trying to talk to you, not everybody else. Okay, y'all didn't hear that. Okay, so there's a voice that God speaks to everybody. That's in the church. But then there's a certain intimacy God want to have with just you. Okay, y'all didn't hear me. He wants you to get out of your bed of misery. He wants you to get out of your pity party. Get out of your bed of fear while the storm is going on. And make your way in the dark to where he is. Uh, if I can get to where he is, Grandma used to say, it's storming. Keep it what? Keep it quiet. And here's the reason why we can't hear God, because we're so busy trying to fix stuff on our own. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me, and I ain't going to get no help. But uh, uh, we're so busy trying to figure stuff out and take medicine and self-medicate and trying to go to Facebook and go to this and go to that and drink and club. And if I buy new clothes, if I lose weight, if I go to the gym, maybe I'll feel better. Uh, but you're trying to turn the check engine light off. Come on now. Instead of going and get your car fixed. Amen. I just want to tell you, God's got a quick, listen to me, God's got a fix. Oh, y'all ain't hearing Amen. me for whatever you're going through. I praise God. Y'all holding on. We almost yeah, done. Uh, so while you're going through, Psalm 34, talk about fear. And fear brings on depression because when you don't have love, fear comes in. And when you don't know how much God cares for you, then you can be uncertain about what tomorrow's going to bring. And you have to worry about the bills. Come on, somebody. And worry about how you're going to make ends meet. And have to worry about why you feel so bad. Uh, it's because you don't know the love. Amen. Oh, love has got everything to do. Because when you don't understand what he's doing, when you know how much he loves you, you know he's doing the very best for you. Okay, y'all didn't shout, but I'm going to say it again. He loves you that much. In Psalm 34, he starts off in verse 1, and we ain't going to go there, but he said, I bless the Lord. We're going to do that at the end, amen? Yeah. I, I want you to go down, Deacon. He started talking about fear. Everybody said fear. 
because a lot of us going through hell, but again, we're not coming to where we can get our, watch this, our joy, we, we can we get our joy restored, a place where we can get new, new life and new strength. Come on, Deacon, Psalm 34. Verse 4. Listen. I sought the Lord. I sought, so the number one thing you got to do is stop seeking people for your help. Amen. Okay, y'all ain't going to like me at first, but we'll shout before we leave. We run into the wrong places to get help. The first thing David did, and David dealt with real depression. The whole book of Psalms was almost written out of depression. So David, watch this, I'm going to show you. David wrote out of his problems or issues of depression, and the first thing he did was not log in, but he logged out so he could log in with God. Amen. So he sought who? The Lord. He sought the Lord, come on. And he heard me. And he heard me. And delivered me from all my fears. Hold on. And he delivered me from all my fears. We get ready to go, but come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He delivered me from all my fear. They looked unto him. And they looked unto him. And were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. And their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried. Come on. And the Lord heard him. This what man? Poor man. Oh, come on. Anybody ever just felt sorry for yourself? Oh, yeah. Okay, y'all quiet. Ain't no time to listen. Ain't no time to get quiet now. We're going right. to preach before we get out of here. Amen. I mean, just sorry. You, you, you know, depression will make you feel sorry for yourself. It'll have you moping around and just saying, why my life? And make you think everybody else so happy. Am I talking real? It'll make you feel like everybody else happy. Everybody else got what they need. Mm. That's why I'm telling you, social media is sometimes, not all the time, it's sometimes the devil. Because it gives you a perception of everything that ain't real. And then you measure yourself against something that ain't even right. And now you're down in the dumps because you're watching other people that keep going to clubs and keep partying. Why you think they stay in the club? They looking for something to make them feel good. Right. Running. Ain't no folk. I ain't trying to hate. These folk ain't happy. They're miserable. When a woman can pull her skirt up and a woman can turn her backside and let random men get on the back of her, she ain't happy. I don't care how much they smiling when they're so drunk they don't even know how they got hold. I don't care how they look, they ain't happy. When a man gotta run from woman to woman, he look like he got it going on, but that Negro ain't. I'm gonna tell you now, if you can't, if you can't, can separate the real from the fake, log off of Facebook. That's right. uh, but the truth is, y'all ain't going to like me yet, but we spent all our hours logging on. We spent all our hours reading on the internet, on YouTube, and we see all of our time of everybody getting together. You know, I don't know. I don't even have friends like everybody else have. They just take these big, glorious trips, and they all get together and pay everything together. And everybody's always eating crabs and oh, all in the wintertime with fur coats, and I ain't seen that in my life. Am I talking oh, about anybody real here? Amen. I tell you what my life look like. My life look like dishes in the sink. My life look like stuff. Oh.